Hello viewers, Train Simulator Driver here. We're in a 37. Hope you've got a bit of a cuppa. We're in the midst of the Dovetail Games Midweek Madness Sale on Steam. We're on the West Highland Line in a 37 with its little corgi dog and we're going to run a rescue train. So let's get on with it. Excellent. Now all that's out of the way, what we need now is to be allowed past this. And the way we do that is change the points and get permission from our signaler friend. So we're on the West Highland Line extension. And we're in Train Simulator Classic. Excellent. Let's pop back down here and let's try and get a token now. Just slowly ramp up in anticipation of getting it and if we don't get it, we'll uh, break all of a sudden. Excellent. Off we go. So we have a Fort William to lock eel token, housebound. Now this scenario normally runs in the night time, but that's not very exciting from a... Uh, video perspective because it's kind of like well dark and you really don't get to see much of the route so i thought it would be a whole lot nicer to uh give it a little tweak so what i did was i copied the scenario using the build menu inside train simulator classic and then just set these points back Hopefully I'm far enough away from them. I don't think I am. Get that train off the points. Even though I hope I don't upset the scenario here because it is actually doing stuff. No, it's fine. Alright, should better change the points now. Mm, not yet. How about now? There we go. Okay. Alright. Points are done, back in the train, we need to go up the other end now, so let's just shut this end down. Normally you'd put it all the way into shutdown, but it doesn't have a shutdown position in Train Simulator Classic, so that's fine. We'll release the independent brake, I've learnt that lesson the hard way before. And change ends. Pop! Off we are, we're at the other end now. Woohoo! Okay, let's get some headlights on. And some instrument lights, not that they matter too much during the day of course. And brakes off into forward, acknowledge the AWS, and let's get out of here. So we've got our, our token from the signaler, so we can move off. Off towards Lock Isle. So we're going off to rescue a broken down train this evening, and as I was saying, I copied the scenario into a standard scenario because editing career scenarios doesn't go that well because you're not really meant to be able to do it because well that would let you cheat so you kind of can't so copy it into a standard sorry copy the scenario so i've done that and then i hop into a thing called ts tools which is a, a freebie utility for train simulator classic 
And in that I converted the scenario from a career to a standard, the copy I'd made. And then I used it to change the time that we were starting. So this scenario normally starts at 8pm at night. I changed it so it started at about 4pm instead. Which means you get to see what the route looks like, which makes it much more fun. Rather than watching me fumble about in the dark trying to get things happening. Uh, about to head down bubble. Towards the lock. Now this is a fairly common scenario on real railways. The uh, relief of another train. Something that happens pretty much all the time really. So it's nice to have a realistic thing like this in the game. Now, in real life, I am an engineman. I operate on a preserved heritage railway. I fire steam engines and I operate on diesel engines. Which is an enormous amount of fun. But it's also an enormous responsibility. Must be time for a reflective shot, surely. There we go. Click. I think the seawall wasn't reflecting, but that's alright. So when I play, while I'm a bit of a clown, I do try to play with a degree of realism. And that just helps me set me apart from the other streamers that are just playing a game. So if you're interested in a degree of realism but still with plenty of fun and from a hairy, hairy hillbilly clown from the down under land of Australia, driving the trains for you, drop by me channel. Always like seeing a new face or two. I stream on most Sundays. And over the coming couple of months, I'll be streaming on the occasional Saturday. And if you're watching this on the Dovetail Steam channel, then we're in the middle of the Midweek Madness sale, and there's lots of awesome opportunities to fill out your Train Simulator Classic collection, or even your Train Sim World collection for that matter. Now, the HUD's telling me I have to stop just up here, so I'm using the independent brake. That's the little one over here in the corner. And it's not just the HUD that tells me that, because my route knowledge tells me that we've got a stop board up here. And the solid blue light on the stop board tells me that we have to stop, we're not allowed to go through it. If it's flashing, you can go through it. There we are there. And in a moment, the scenario will tell us what to do. And if you're a seasoned player, you know better than to skip ahead. Because strange things can happen when you try and outrun the simulator. So we'll just be patient and we'll wait, won't we? Maybe. Alright, so we can control tab to go past. To request to pass signal at danger is approved. And away we go. Now, we know that we're coming up to an obstruction. In real life, we would have been told roughly where it was, so we could drive at an appropriate speed to get there. But we wouldn't drive at full line speed, because your responsibility as an engineman is to uh, get into the situation at a speed that's appropriate, where you can stop short of any obstruction, which means that you need to be able to drive at a speed where you can stop in, within the visible sighting distance of whatever you're going to relieve. And we can see our train up there in the distance, not terribly far away. I think it's far enough away to get a uh, nice little shot of our approach here. Except we do have to pop in and do a radio call. Because we've left the station boundary. Two, 
Now, in real life, when you've seen the uh, set that you're going to relieve, you'd give them a bit of a warning that you're coming. Just to let them know. And start reducing your speed. Now we can see in the distance there, there's a couple of people standing by to help us couple up and get set to take the train out. We are starting to go down a bit of a slope now, so we just need to watch that and keep our speed under control. Because you don't want to go banging into it and make a uh, fairly run-of-the-mill situation into a rather non-run-of-the-mill situation where you might just, instead of being seen as the hero and doing a favour and rescuing another train and its passengers, you might become, well, the protagonist. And you'll have an interesting meeting with your boss. You may want you to play a part in paying out the compensation to all the passengers that you hurt when you banged into the train while they were sitting inside, minding their own business. The guy with his hand up, so we'll acknowledge that. We've got our speed nice and low now. Let's pop out of the train so we can see what's going on a bit better. Now you'd always stop short. Before you couple up to a relief train, you'd have a conversation, you'd work out between the two drivers what you're going to do, and the other crew involved on the ground. And only then would you proceed to couple up. Given this is old-fashioned hook and couplers, you don't need to whack into them really hard like you do with knuckles find the point. There we go. Well done. Please head back to Corpac and on to Fort William. We will not stop at Lock Isle Outward Bound, Corpac or Banavis tonight. Contact the signaller now to get a token. Lovely. But first, before we do that, I think we probably want to change ends. So we'll put this break into as near to shut down as we can get it. Make sure this one is fully released. It is. Engine off. And let's get rid of our headlights and our instrument lights. And then let's change in the way you do in this game. Bonk. And we have now changed into the other end of the train, so we'll pop on our instrument lights up this end and our headlights. Excellent. Might want to open the window as well. Never know. Some of that brisk, scootish air. It's time to get our token. Two, two, seven, eight, seven, In the meantime, I've released the train brake, so it'll start pumping up the train, and I've applied the locomotive brake to stop us rolling away while that happens. So there's two things there. We have an appropriate authority to be on the line, which is a good thing because we're on it. And we have permission to pass the stop board at the station up there, which just makes life a little bit easier. Now it's time for some proper thrash. Because of course our passengers are already very late and they just want to get going.
You seem to be in a tree. Yep, and because I was out of the cab then, I uh, didn't properly acknowledge the AWS. So it's going to make a stop. Isn't that unfortunate? Let's just pop it back down into off. And at some point we should see the brakes start to come off. Just waiting for the timer. So much for being professional. I was too busy getting a camera angle. There they go now. They're starting to come off. Just have to wait long enough. And we can start accelerating so we don't roll backwards. Now, with this particular train, you don't hear the alerter from the AWS, the sound, when you're outside the train. So you need to keep a little bit of an eye on the exclamation mark next to the stop sign symbol there. Otherwise, that happens to you. And being the consummate professional, maybe cross that out and write clown, I was uh, just getting a nice camera angle for you guys. That's life. It's a passenger head out view. Let's get a move on. Let's get this train back to Fort William. Now this scenario has you doing some shunting after Fort William, but uh, we won't do that because I'm on a bit of a time constraint with this session. Now you'll notice on the stop board up there we have a blue flashing light which means we can go straight through. This bloke of course wants to get on the train and he is now going, what? 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 It just went straight through. What's going on? What a meanie. always amaze me the uh, quality of the graphics from it. a 20 year old gaming engine. It's quite impressive. And we have left the station limits so I should tell our signal of that. cruise through the afternoon. We appear to be in a tree again. a bit of an upslope here as we're almost back where we started from at the Pulpville East sightings. Let's give it a bit more grunt to get up the hill. Notice here we have a yellow distance signal that's permanently on. 
So it's permanently letting you know that there's a red signal coming up. Because just after the pulp mill sightings is a level crossing. And that level crossing will have a red signal on it until such time as it actually starts to clear. Just start a little bit of braking just to start slowing us down in case the red signal doesn't come off. Release the brakes now. This gets us down to about 28 mile an hour, which will be fine if we need to need to actually brake in a hurry. And the signal's gone green. So we can continue. These crossings are remarkably noisy. But they do in fact work, which is cool. Once the train gets far enough away, it'll pop open. There they go. Just in time for the AWS. Because we're coming into a low speed section of the line, and we have to do 10 mile an hour. There's lots of little foot crossings everywhere to get people to the shore. This is a fairly picturesque line. Lots of water, lots of ambiance. Kick the brakes off now. Wake the unit up again, just so we don't lose too much speed. You'll see that crossing up there will start shortly. AWS again, and we've got 10 mile an hour across the crossing. That's just to give the gates enough time to close. And we've got a white flashing light up there, so we're good to go. We have to run at 10 through the crossing and through the platform, and then back to our regular speed just afterwards. Another passenger waiting on the platform here that unfortunately we can't service today. At least the window's open. G'day brother, train's busted, I'll get you a new one. Over here we have the uh, nice fishing vessel. Looks kind of like a research vessel. Or a tugboat, maybe. Could be a tugboat. We'd better get back in our train because it's running out of oomph because it's going up a 1 in 49 gradient. We're back to 40 miles an hour now, so let's have some good thrash. another distant signal that's permanently mounted in the on position.
Moving away from the lock now. As we head towards Fort William. Cutting off because we have got a lower speed section coming up. Little 25 zone here as we go around the curve. Plenty of traffic on the road there, which I always appreciate. It makes the route feel more lively. Bit of a tight one in this corner. Another level crossing up there and a red signal. Which should clear, but if it doesn't, we need to be prepared to stop. The bridge is still moving, coming into place. We've also got... I left this a little bit late, but I think we're going to get away with it. We did. Lucky. It's interesting how the road bridge opens when the railway bridge shuts. Now, right in front of us, we have a temporary speed restriction flashing board there, which means that we should expect some track workers. I did approach that bridge just a little bit too fast. We're just doing some spirited running right now. Just ignore the HUD. Ignore it. Ignore it. Oh, I better slow down if this bloke up here will have something to say about it. Got to acknowledge him, he's got his hand up. And we've got a trackside speed limit as the regular 40 as we pass through Banavi Station. Sounds like a pie. Is this place made of bananas and caramel? Oh no, that's Banoffee. So we've got a temporary speed limit of 25. And our track worker here just letting us know. He's got his hand up because he's letting us know he's seen us. AWS warning for his temporary spot sign there, his speed limit. And we can now accelerate, but only up to 25. We come across a bunch of chaps who are doing a bit of work on the side of the track. Track used to be my job on the railway, but I've gotten into locomotives. If you want to know more about track work, I have a video series on my channel, which is about real life experiences on the Heritage Railway. And if you're not aware, Heritage Railways in this country are just another railway. We're covered by an act of parliament, just like all the regular railways are. And we obey the same rules and regulations, and we have the same regulator. And if you're naughty, we have the same punishments. So I just cruise through here, nice low speed for the blokes doing track work. the temporary limit end sign just coming up here. And at some point we'll be allowed to go back up to 40 mile an hour. Back of the train's almost past the crew now. Alright, back of the train's past the crew so we can go back up to our normal speed. Just past the end marker. Like the hint of the mountains up ahead there behind the uh, slightly jittery mist.
Green Signal and a couple of miles to Fort William. And naturally, a gratuitous bridge shot because you have to. I like the little castles there. It's like rooks. Say hello to the fellas. Green signal to come into Fort William. And the end of radio token working. Just a slight gradient coming into Fort William. just noticed my camera makes this um, cup grey. Hmm, it's actually purple. It's from one of my favourite places in the world, the uh, Yosemite National Park in the US. One of my recent trips, I was privileged enough to camp there for a week. It's a great way to see the park because you can get out of bed and get on the get on the trail at six in the morning when the sun's just come up so that you're four hours ahead of all the tourists who are just getting out of bed in the cities to get into their cars to come to the park which means you actually get to experience the park as a wilderness not as a place that's unbearably full of people until you come back down the trail later on and you pass them all going the other way final approach into Fort William now and I can see I've got about 10 minutes or so left on my time slot so we'll see how much of the shunt work we can get in so if you like a visually pleasing route which has got a, uh, we're going to go into platform one, please ensure the position of the train clear of the runaround points so we don't foul them. Very good. So if you like a visually pleasing route, then uh, this one's probably right up your alley. Got a yellow signal, that's because we're coming into a dead end platform. So if you'd like to see more of uh, realistic train driving with an element of clown thrown in for the good amusement and the occasional major error feel free to drop by my channel. I'm on YouTube and I am Train Simulator Driver. It's all one word. It's time to stop this beastie and uncouple, and that should keep us plenty of room over the points. I'm going to return the token, so let's press the call button. Clear of 
Oh, that noise from the 80s. The internet of old. While all that's happening, we can uncouple. See, why don't we stay outside the train while we do this bit? That's about all for you, matey. Let's go onto this frame here while the train stops. There we go. Ready for it to come back. Just wait for the scenario to catch up with us. We're going to head out the other end. So it wants us to change ends now, so we'll do that. Put this brake on as much as we can. Release this one as much as we can. Set the train to off, which we've already done. Instrument lights and headlights off. And change ends. Headlights on. Instrument lights on. Release the brake. Wake up the... Uh, directions, put this in forward, and off we go. Give the passengers the delight of a bit of thrash. Go three times the speed limit because we're running out of time in our time slot. I want to see how much we can get done. Might be simpler if we just do that. Perhaps not actually, because then I won't really know where to stop. It makes me a tad nervous because we're clearly heading out of yard limits. Yet we're uh, got no token. This feels like one of those moments when another stop point possibly could have been added to uh, make the scenario a little more realistic. Clearly wants us to cross this signal boundary here. There we go. Now we'll be heading back the other way to collect our train. Love a little brakes, not quite believing the rail driver. Not making any amperes. Have we not gotten into reverse quite properly? I suspect that might be the case. Let's give it a cry now. It's 
not making any amps. What would that be? Back into reverse now. Let's try that. There we go. It's one of the challenges with rail driver is it doesn't always quite properly talk to the game. And things look like they've happened right, but it hasn't. But you just live with these things because, you know, using the rail driver is a lot more fun than just using the keyboard and the mouse. actually bought my rail driver in 2001 when MSTS came out. So it's a very, very old device. It still works. It's the only computer device I've got that's that old that still works. Now I have a faint suspicion that we might want to ask the signaller for permission to go through that signal. Loud in, we've got a shunt now. You can see the little diagonal, oops, zoomed in too far. See the little diagonal white lights there? That lets us know that we can go past the red. I'll just take this back down and put it on the train, and that'll be right about time. Our little brake is not quite believing the rail driver again. Like I'm, it is a lot more responsive at low revs now, so that was the issue. head down and wait to couple up so the shunter on the ground is always going to work on the driver's side of the locomotive wherever possible so that you can give hand signals so we'll stay over on this side rather than be up on the platform it does mean that you need to be mindful of any traffic that might be moving around next to you Let's come to a stop before we couple. Everything set up, build. And close the gap. And just get her coupled up. Let's find a hot spot. There we go. Now, take this lot back to the depot for repair. Well, we actually won't be doing that because we're out of time for our time slot. But let's just get above the, the area, a bit of a view. This very pretty area of Scotland. And of course, it wouldn't be right if there wasn't someone that say, I cannot give it any more, Captain. And that's all from me, Train Simulator Driver. Enjoy the sale. Hope you're picking some stuff up. If you're watching this on my channel later, sorry, the sale's over. <laughs> anyway, have fun. Bye.